Hey what's up guys, Ara over here and welcome back to a brand new video here today and a bit of a different one because we have a modded gameplay here with F1 2020 with George Russell in the Mercedes car number 63 on the back of that black silver arrow and we're going to be doing a race around the short Bahrain circuit on F1 2020. Now of course the short circuit on the F1 2020 game is not the actual same outer layout. If you do want to see a race around there, I did do a video earlier in the week taking the kind of oval kind of outer layout of Bahrain for a swing on a set of Corsa. But here on the F1 game, the best alternative we have is just the short layout, which is kind of basically half the real circuit. So it's still a very short lap. We're going to do a 25% race here and see how we can do in the shoes of George Russell from last place on the grid in the Mercedes car. I don't think we'll be jinxing anything or kind of predicting much, obviously, because it's not the exact same layout, but it's fun to see nonetheless Russell in a Mercedes on the actual official F1 game. So here we go with that uh, very bright red helmet of his from the back of the grid. Bottas on pole for this one. Five red lights are out and we're underway. It's a 14 lap race, 25% distance, but being such a short layout, it's going to fly by. The, the, the total race time is actually 15 minutes in total, and that's not including, you know, cutting out the kind of boring part of this race in terms of the highlights of this video. So into turn one, though, very argy-bargy here. Tight stuff through the first two turns. Then here we go. This is the difference here with the short layout. We take a sharp right-hander, then go down a subtle hill and there would normally be where we meet the apex for that very difficult left-hander where it's very easy to lock up under normal circumstances in sector two at the normal Bahrain circuit but here now we're flying on into what effectively would be the last sector now the full layout and then in terms of where the actual oval outer circuit is this is obviously where the outer circuit comes into in real life so it's a bit of a shame we don't have that layout in the game but obviously they could never have predicted what a 2020 would have had and you know the use of that outer lay up there but we're already up into p11 now after quite a tight turns one and two making the move stick in sector two and three now looking on the back of on the ferrari cars but the ferrari's gonna die down the inside of the red bull there and so it's a very surprising move because i was ready to make a move myself on the ferrari on the outside but instead he had other ideas i believe i think it's uh i think leclerc i think that is as we go around the outside and we'll overtake the ferrari eventually but i was very shocked actually i've never seen an ai that aggressive uh, at any circuit, really, or on the F1 2020 game, uh, let alone the last few F1 games as well. So I don't know if the short layout, the kind of sprint race nature of the circuit is meaning the AI being a little bit punchy, but we're going to be punchy ourselves. Dive down the inside of Alex and Albon struggling in the Red Bull, very much like he uh, was actually in real life yesterday in qualifying. Obviously himself knocked out in Q2. It also, also was a very tough day in the office for Lando Norris as well in the uh, one of the two McLarens. There's we're catching up to Norris, I believe. This is is we're going to try and get a good exit using plenty of ARS, but remember, it's actually the base level car, so compared to my team, if you watch my my team career mode, we're going to have to watch out for the ERS usage. We can't abuse it every single straight like we might love to do in the my team career. We have to be a little bit cautious, so we might not be able to deploy too much ERS for a lot of these remaining laps of this Grand Prix. We're already down to, you know, 40% left for the entire race as we now go around the outside and dance our way around the Renault as well as the McLaren there and finish that move off and we're up into p7 on lap number three so the mercedes car working well as ever around bahrain short and we are flying through and looking good to hopefully go from that last to well we're going to try and aim for first place but it's gonna be a different question if we can try and overtake valtteri bottas let's see when we get to that but first and foremost I have to actually make sure we get to that but the engine is overheating so much here on lap number four we send it down the inside of carlos Sainz. but you would have seen the heads up display there on the right the engine was pretty much red which is actually very concerning because I never usually let it get to red but that pretty much means the engine's going to lose some power actually with the game with the way the temperatures work so we have to try and cool that down we bring it down you can see it's now green again on the bottom right and so now we can use some rich mix deploying ERS across the line then we stop because we're already down to 15% there on the bottom right but DRS should help us make a move on the outside late on the brakes into turn one a place where Russell I think is losing the most time really to Valtteri Bottas in real life you know he's not used to maybe the rotation of the Mercedes, the kind of front end sharpness compared to the Williams car and also I think every brake zone I think Russell looking at the comparison lap times and the actual on board it just seems like he's actually kind of almost not used to having that much braking power and stopping power with the Mercedes car so that's where he's actually losing time to Valtteri's that confidence under braking where obviously uh, Valtteri's been driving that car the entire year so of course he's completely on top of it but we make a lovely move on the outside of the second Renault 
I think that was Darren Ricardo. We must have got Ocon earlier. And so we're up into P4 of this GP with five laps gone. So very, very good progress. And now catching up to the racing point. And then pretty much it will just be the last two usual suspects. We've got Verstappen, I think, in second place, pressurizing Bottas for first. We're now very low on ERS, though, 7%. So... Uh, I don't think you're going to see me basically using ERS very much now for the next few laps. Pretty much until after our pit stop, basically. Because I just don't have any, any to deploy. Like, it, it drains so quickly on these base cars. It's a bit of a joke, really, when you're too used to the My Team career mode and the way the ERS deploys there. But here we are on the swing now on the uh, the, the shortcut layout. Then onto the DRS straight. So it, what it is, it's a very unique short circuit. I actually do like it a lot. I do enjoy the outer ring, though. Having driven it on a set of Corsa, that's also quite fun. Um, so I wouldn't mind, you know, as I did mention in the set of course video, I think it was, you know, F1 should definitely, you know, if they want to try and, you know, make longer calendars, but without trying to be a logistical nightmare, they should look into these alternative layouts more often because it's been very interesting in real life to see them go out on that outer layout bar rain. And here for us, very, very fun to kind of cut in on that shortcut and miss out uh, a bit of the lap, basically, and just kind of uh, buck it through with, a, you know, you can see on the top right, just over one minute lap time. So it's not quite the 55 seconds of the uh, outer layout in real life, but it is still very, very short compared to the real life Grand Prix. We now have to defend against the Racing Point car because I, I had no ERS to deploy. I didn't want to deploy too much. So the Racing Point with DRS was able to actually come uh, back at us into turn one, lap number seven. So we have to do some defending there and uh, looking behind me rather than forward Forwards, unfortunately, but eventually we will try and break away a little bit. But here is now Bottas and Verstappen coming in for their pit stop. Now they're going to come in one lap earlier than I am. We're going to continue on, so we're going to be leading the Bahrain race now, or the Sakir Grand Prix, as George Russell in the Mercedes car. The racing point continues on with us in second place. Now, the thing is, hopefully, our, our overcar should actually be quite good because I think Bottas and Verstappen are going to be fed into some traffic. So as long as we keep it clean on this outlap and don't lose too much time with the tire wear we could close up at least you know a second or two there was a few seconds gap to Verstappen so we only need a few seconds to close up and then we can just use DRS hopefully to kind of uh you know, completely get right behind them underneath their rear wing and go for that overtake. But here we are then onto a set of medium tyres, the racing boy in with us, and it's a pretty decent stop there. And obviously no traffic in the pit lane to kind of hold us up. But now we look on that left hand side, or now right rather, comparing on the angle the TV angle we're looking at on the replay camera. Where is Bottas? Where is Verstappen? We go back on board with ourselves, and uh, up the road is Bottas still in first place, but he's being held up by the Alfa Romeo car there. So Verstappen and Bottas are going to lose some time and look how slow the Alfa Romeo is through that right hand uh, really uh, pushing Bottas back into Verstappen and then uh, equally so those two as a unit back towards me and you can see there we are then we're in the frame in the camera shot but Bottas goes for the move to overtake the Alfa Romeo to get into the lead on the actual racetrack itself rather than just the net position but Verstappen doesn't get the move he's not close enough and look how slow he is through this entire section up the hill it, and this, you know, it's going to be an issue, I think, in real life. You know, in the Grand Prix later today, because it's being uploaded before the real life Sakia Grand Prix. So later in today's race, I think you're going to see this. You're going to see some issues with traffic where it's going to be very hard even for the blue flag cars or just, you know, traffic in general to get out of the way for the faster cars to make the moves. Because it's such a quick lap and such a full throttle lap. It's going to be quite difficult. So it's going to be a big talking point and way, and, you know, might even decide the race or the podium or, you know, definitely some big play is for, you know, the midfield battle between McLaren, Renault, Racing Point and Ferrari. Uh, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see because Leclerc did a mega job in qualifying. Bonkers to see him right up there. Obviously, Norris and, uh, and Albon got knocked out and then you got the Racing Points looking very, very strong and then Renault kind of floating in the middle there. So, we'll see how that all goes. But for us, we're going to overtake Verstappen with ease. My engineer actually told me that he has a mechanical issue. So, he's slowing down and limping in this Grand Prix. So, uh, hopefully, that doesn't happen in real life. I said we hopefully won't jinx or, you know, predict anything because it's not the actual technical outer layout. But uh, <laughs> you never know. But let's hope, let's hope not to be mega to see Verstappen fighting up there with Bottas and Russell, hopefully, fingers crossed. But here we are then, on towards the second last lap of the Grand Prix, and we're now within one second. We're tucked up behind the rear wing of Bottas that was into turn one, such as the closing speed with DRS, but unable to make a move quite yet. And obviously, you can see in the bottom right, we're in single-digit figures for ERS, so I need to be very careful 
and pick my, you know, I need to really pick this straight where I use ERS properly. And at the same time, also engine temps, we need to make sure we keep those down. And so we're in standard mixture and lean mixture at the moment as well. Just run cool down the engine, keeping it in standard. We will use rich mix eventually on the straights, but just in the corners need to keep it in standard because no point overheating the engine. But here we go, a tap of the ERS and we're so close. Bottas gives us some room, but just unable to do it. We're practically pushing him through the last corner. This is so, so far. And this is pretty much the gap that there was in qualifying pretty much on the road if you visualised it. But here we go then for the move on towards the last lap of the Grand Prix side by side with our brand new teammate Valtteri Bottas driving as George Russell in the Mercedes car with that bright red helmet. Schumacher vibes for sure definitely in that black Mercedes car but we have overtaken Bottas but into the next right hander. A little bit of a lock up there and a bit wide and Bottas wiggles through tries to get a move done on the right hand side. Obviously he's got DRS now. We've not got anything We've not, we're not going to deploy ERS that much, but we are going to squeeze him a little bit and just deploy a tiny tap of, uh, of the button. And now we're going to try and swing through, but Bottas gets the cut back. He switches from right to left. He's on the outside. We give him some room. Let off to give him the space. Dive back down the inside. It's a great, great scrap through the last two sectors here of this short Bahrain circuit layout. And we're still going for it. It's still a drag race down to the final corner, but we are going to get it to the inside. And we we should have the run to the line to win the Sakir Grand Prix alternative Bahrain GP race as George Russell in his Mercedes car. If you guys did enjoy that one, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the race. Later.